So what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel once again. You know I appreciate having you here. Now I'm on another first impressions ride and I'm on this beautiful thing here. This is the new Honda Goldwing Bagger. They don't call it a bagger, they call it something else. I think this is called the standard Goldwing and the other one's called the Goldwing Tour, whatever. But in reality, this is a bagger. So I'm really looking forward to this one. So stick around for this video, the big mahusive Honda Goldwing Bagger. Right, let's get the formalities out of the way. Once again, thank you very much to Doble's Motorcycles down in Causden. I shall leave the link to their website down below in the descriptions box, so go and check those out. Also, I shall leave the link to the specifications for this bike. Yeah, so go and check that out down there, the specifications and Doble's Motorcycles website. Also, as per usual, if you do go into a Doble's, make sure you mention me, number one, and number two, make sure you give Ian, the general manager, a huge hug from me. He still loves them, you know. He's missing them. He hasn't had enough lately, he says. So uh, go and do that for me. It'll be much appreciated. So now about me, and the reason I tell you about me is so you know how I get on with the ergonomics and stuff like that, how I fit on the bike, how I feel about the bike, and you get my opinion. And it is just my opinion. You might agree, you might disagree. But if you really want to know how you feel on it, go and book a test ride and uh, go and have a little bit of a play. So myself, six foot two, wide in the shoulders, long in the leg, now touching about 18 stone and as i said that's just so you know how i get on with the ergonomics as soon as i'm talking about ergonomics let's get right on with that and it's uh, a lovely place to be i've got to admit i would like to say it's uncomfortable but i can't this is a luxury motorcycle and my backside is feeling very luxurious at the moment it is so comfortable the peg to seat to bars ratio is spot on as i said i'm a big lump so if it fits me it should fit most people but then again the bike is a big lump itself it's smaller than the uh, outgoing model the previous 1800 which is a good thing i know people have moaned about it oh it's slightly smaller it's more nimble that's what it is it's more bloody nimble and that's a good thing especially in england we don't have many straight roads over here let's face it we don't have a lot of straight roads and if you are going out heading for the motorway then uh that's not really the most exciting thing to do on a bike, is it? Head for the motorway? I don't do that. And you're not going to get a motorway video on this one. I'm not heading for the freeway, the motorway. Uh, the freeway bit was for people across the pond, just in case they're watching the video. But I'm not going to head for the motorway because I know this thing will be bloody brilliant on the motorway. Sitting there, just in your little air bubble, cruising along. It's going to be a wonderful place. We are going to do a walk around. I'm going to find somewhere to do a walk around. We're going to have a, a little bit of a, a view. I don't know what I was going to do then. I just went like that and was expecting something philosophical to come out of my mouth. But as usual, it didn't. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a look round. And uh, I'm going to go through this dash with you as well and uh, tell you how I've hooked up my phone. Because I've got my phone on it at the moment. We've got Apple CarPlay on this system. And at the moment, I'm shamelessly plugging my daughter's latest single. For those of you that don't know, that, let me get close up. That there, that's my daughter. And that's her, her latest single. It came out about a month ago, and it went to number one in the R&B charts on iTunes. Go and have a little listen. Her name's Talia Mar. The single's called Diamonds. And uh, go and download it. And download all her other singles as well. There you go, end of shameless plug. Right, anyway, where were we? Back to the bike. Yeah, ergonomics. My legs fit nicely in here. They're just about touching this ridge here. So if you have got extremely long legs, you might be touching that, but it's unlikely. As I say, my thigh bone, as I said in that introduction bit, is very long. It's probably longer than normal, even for people my height. I'm very leggy, you know, like a stick insect, except not quite as thin. Like a fat stick insect, if there's such a thing. A log insect. The bars are a nice width. They sit nicely under my shoulders. <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> I know what I'm trying to say. They're a nice width for me. I don't feel like they're too low or too high. Oh, in case you haven't noticed, this is a manual as well. And I was a little bit sceptical at first, but having been riding this for 10, 15 minutes, it's not bad at all. The gearbox is so slick, the clutch is nice and light. So it's not bad. I thought I'd be struggling with a manual gold wing. I thought, what's the point? What is the point? And the point is, if you like a manual bike, you can still get one of these. It does feel nice. As I said, the clutch is nice and light. The gearbox is slick, 
I'm not sure how many gears it's got. Let's have a go. I'm not going to go fast, but I'm going to click it right up. So it's got six gears. So I know the DCT is a, a seven gear DCT system, but this has got six and that's plenty. The screen is doing a good job at protecting me. It's not the ultimate protection because it's quite low. I've got it on its highest setting at the moment. It is electronically adjustable and it's on its highest setting. So it's giving just a tiny bit of buffeting around the peak on my lid, but I have got an adventure style lid on. If you have got a road lid, it'll probably be a lot better. It's just catching slightly on the peak. You've got this wind deflector thing as well. I don't know if it actually does anything, but you could put chewing gum in there at least. The mirrors do a really, really good job. They're nice and far out there. I can see past my elbows. I can see everything behind me really, really clearly. Oh, this bike is so smooth. This engine gearbox configuration. It's just wonderfully smooth. It's smoother than one of my pickup lines. Suspension is ironing out these little imperfections in the row nicely. If you stick it on the back lanes where it is really, really bumpy and there's lots of potholes and like ripples in the road, you will feel it because it's set up for touring, it's set up for long distance, nice roads, cruising, that sort of thing. It's not set up for back road scratching. I've noticed that. You can feel the vibrations through and I think pretty much more than I could feel on the big tour version. Whether that's because that's got electronic suspension and this is manual, I don't know. But I seem to notice it more on here. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just saying it's slightly different. It's a flat six, 24 valve engine. It sounds good, doesn't it? I only read that before I came out. So I thought I'd get on there with the technical stuff. And it makes such a lovely noise. I wouldn't bother sticking aftermarket exhaust on this. I don't even know you can get them. You probably can but I wouldn't bother because you want to relax when you're on a bike like this. It's not all about in your face. It's not about the noise. It's about the experience. And I know it's a heavy bike. I'm not sure how much it weighs. Again, that'll be in the specifications down below. It feels so well balanced. At first, when you get on it, you can notice the weight. But as soon as you're moving, that weight just disappears. Well, it doesn't disappear. That's a stupid saying. I don't know why people say that. It doesn't disappear. You don't feel like you're on a cloud. You don't feel like you're levitating. But what I'm saying is it becomes very manageable. But I'm getting an idea now of what it's like in traffic. I'm purposely sitting in slow traffic just to see what it would be like. And again, very, very well balanced. Very easy to get on with. It doesn't feel like you're on a bike of this size. I'm just plodding along, second gear. But it doesn't feel wallowy, it doesn't feel like it wants to do that slalom that some heavy bikes do. Bikes that carry their weight high up, they want to keep turning left and right. But this, no, it's, it's lovely and smooth. It's not intimidating at all. And that's a good thing. Last thing you want is an intimidating bike. I mean, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't want to bench press it, but riding around on these little streets in traffic, it's just, it actually feels quite nimble. I mean, it doesn't feel like a scooter. I'm not saying it's that nimble, but I'm saying the nimbleness of it is a, is a surprise when you look at it. It handles so predictably. Yeah, you gotta muscle it around a little bit, but once you get into the smoothness of it, the way it handles, the, the length of the wheelbase and how you ride it, don't hustle it so much, even though I know I say you have to hustle a big bike, you have to put some physical effort in. But if you ride slick, smooth lines, then everything just falls into place and it becomes such a lovely place to be. I mean, fourth gear, I'm in tour mode now. There's just no effort. Just a little bit of push and pull on the bars, a little bit through the pegs, but it glides. Right, well, I have got this in tour mode. I've got to stick it in sport mode. You just click up on here and it comes up there, sport mode. And it should be a little bit more responsive because this is a faster piece of road. So uh, I'm going to keep it in third. We're at 3,000 revs. And when we get around this uh, bend here, I'm going to give it a little bit and see what happens. slow that's for sure she is not slow but it's so silky it's effortless the torque of this engine is beautiful right so here we are out and about newlands corner we're going to do the walk around and i've got this today the bagger the 1800 honda goldwing bagger 
Look at her. She's a beauty. Let's have a little bit of a look round. She's a good looking bike. I really like this bike. When I think back at the old gold wings and how much I dislike them to how much I actually like this bike, it's just, it's amazing. It is chalk and cheese. All right, so let's start at the front and work our way back. On the front, we've got an 18 inch wheel, not 17, but 18. And it's uh, 130, 70, 18 on the front there. You've got dual discs, ABS, as you would expect. And on the rear, I can't even get to the size of that. I can't see it, it's too low down, I'm too old, I'm too broken, I can't get down there, so we're going to have to guess. I reckon that's around a 200. Again, obviously ABS on the back, and this has got traction control that is in conjunction with the modes. I'm not sure if you can uh, alter it manually, we shall see when we go through the dashboard, but we're going to have a quick one through the dashboard, we're not going to go in depth because I'm losing light and I want to go and ride some more. The engine is a peach, it's a flat 6, 1800. And I believe it's pushing out, I don't know what this means, 93 kilowatts. I don't know what that is in brake horsepower. You're going to have to look that up. But I just read that before I came out. And uh, the torque on it is just uh, phenomenal. I just think it's great. It suits this bike. The torque, the smoothness, the way this engine delivers its power is beautiful. Married to this gearbox, even though it's a manual, I do prefer the DCT. I would get a DCT version over this manual. But if you do get a manual, do you know what? It is bloody good. The clutch is smooth. The gear shift is smooth. The whole bloody thing is smooth. That's the theme of this one, smooth. Riders pegs, just rubber to smooth out any vibrations there are, which basically not a lot. And uh, obviously you brake. On the rear, the passenger gets a nice footboard. Oh, you've got a little cubby hole here. And that's also got your release for your fuel cap there. Seat, very, very comfortable. Can't say what it's like for a pillion, because obviously I'm not a pillion, but you've got grab handles here, and it does feel nice and squishy. There's a lot there. That's nice. It's wide as well, so I'd assume that would be very comfortable, but only a pillion can tell me that. On the back, you've got these panniers that open via that button when you're using the keyless system. Obviously, they're, they're lock once you lock the whole bike up and disappear, but they're not massive. I don't think you can get a crash helmet in there, not unless you uh, smash it with a hammer first. But you can get a few bits and bobs in there, and you've got the same on the other side. Around the back, it's just nice. I like the back view of this. I really do. I like the exhaust at the bottom there, and uh, the panniers. It all reminds me a little bit of a muscle car. It sounds a little bit like a muscle car, to be honest. Obviously not V8, a flat six version, but it's just got a nice burble to it, and the symmetry at the back is just, yeah. It's that. I don't know what that means, but it's that. Right, round this side, again, another pannier there. Again, not the greatest amount of room, but you get a bag and a few things there. I could quite easily go away for a weekend with just that luggage space and a little bag strapped to the back because I travel quite lightly. But if you travel with a lot of luggage, then upgrade and get the tour version. Again, pillion foot board there. And on this side, you've got your peg as per the other side, plus a gear shift because she's manual and that's what she looks like she's very pretty i do like it it's got a a nice stance to it let's turn on the lights give you a little bit of a look at that right on the front you've got full leds with these running lights at the top and a little strip at the bottom indicators are leds as well on the wing mirrors obviously you can see that one flashing when they're not flashing they stay on as an extra bit of visibility Right on the back, again, LEDs, and it's full LEDs with the indicators integrated into the brake lights. I really like the back end of this. Right, let's go through the dash area, or this area here, the centre console and the hand controls. Uh, I'm not going to go in depth. We're going to have a little flying look at it. It still might take a while because there's quite a bit on it. We're going to have a little look at it. Hopefully you get all the information you need. Anyway, let's start her up. And there you go. It is keyless. I've got the key in my pocket, or the fob. So that coincides with this ignition switch here and obviously this bit here, the way you start it with. But let's press enter, because that's basically saying don't be an idiot. If you fall off, it's your own fault. Uh, let's go to a home screen. That's a little home button there. Right on the left here, we've got a little LCD screen here with cruise control speed up there. You've got your trip down here. And over here, it's controlled with this button here. So you select that and it runs the arrow down. So if you put it on trip, it's got trip B at the moment totals 563 miles trip a trip b and total that's all's on there and if you go at the top it's got air temperature 
and a cruise control. You've got fuel gauge here and your range there. I've only got 55 miles left in the tank. Over here, obviously, you've got your speedometer and you've got your cruise control light there. On this side, you've got a rev counter and what mode you're in. You've got tour, sport, rain and eco and your gear indicator there. Down here, you've got your engine temperature, your heated grip setting, and it's telling me the side stands down. Up here, you've got an ABS light, which will go off at five miles an hour. And also you've got here, which I discovered on the way up here, is you've got a hill hold control. You won't roll backwards on a hill. Your lights around the outside, you've got a fuel light there, indicator light there. I think that's saying tire pressure warning. It looks like that. I'm not sure whether that's connected up to this system. You've got your alarms, full beam, engine management, oil, Another indicator light there. When I say indicator, I mean those. And down here, some other probably water temperature and another light system. I don't know what that means. Right, so we do the hand controls before we get into the screen. On the left hand side, you've got a clutch. You've got a push to pass here. You've got your volume for your system up here. You've got a screen adjuster here, which does that, brings it up and down. I think it all speaks for itself. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Here you've got your telephone, you've got your home button, you've got your back button, you've got your hooter, you've got your controls, which muck around with all of this. If you see, if I press that up, that goes through there, and you've got enter in the middle, left and right, so that'll do your music, you can skip on that. Down here you've got a source button and a mute button, so if you're listening to music or something, you can mute it from there, you've got your indicators, you've got a, a little reverse here that's what that is it's a reverse i'll show you that in a minute and an r button which puts it into reverse on the right hand side you've got your kill switch you've got your modes so you can go through sport economy rain and tour that's just this flick of the switch up or down on there you've got hazard light you've got your cruise control here and you're up and down for the cruise control there and obviously a throttle which is throttle by wire it's not a cable on this in the middle you've got your ignition system here which is keyless as i said let me give you a quick look at that and that's that. That's basically your key for the bike. So anyway, back to here and on here we got the jog wheel. So again, that will scroll through here. You can turn it, you can put it up or down, left or right, and obviously enter in the middle. That speaks for itself. Down here, home button, back button, select button, set button. In the middle, info. And that tells me I'm on the radio. I suppose you can set it up how you want it. The choice is yours. With these sort of systems, you, you set it up how you want it. You have a little play with it. You connect it to your Bluetooth set. You connect it to your phone. And you set it up exactly how you want it, how you want to use it. I'm just doing it through how the shop have got it. So it's probably not uh, how I would want it. And it's not set up fully. So I'm kind of going through this first time with you guys as well. So we're, we're doing this together. Down the bottom, you've got audio. Here, we're going between speakers and a Bluetooth headset. Also, if you're using the info button at the bottom here, so if you've got navigation on, you've got your music streaming or you're on a phone call, you can still go through information out here. You just keep pressing this info button at the bottom here. So fuel consumption instant, elapsed time riding, that's nothing. And then back on, that's the radio. And then that fuel consumption average and trip A. You know how it goes. That's pretty simple and it's self-explanatory. Right, let's connect my phone and go through some of those features. I put that in. Let's close that up. And that's come up with one extra here. It's gone off a phone there, so I'm not Bluetooth connected for phone for phone calls. I'm mirroring using Apple CarPlay. We'll come to that in a minute. We'll go through audio source first. I use this wheel to keep it quite simple. You can use this here, but I use this. So audio source, I press enter, and that's radio at the moment. So you can go through and scroll up and down depending on what radio station you want. You know how radios work. I don't know why I'm telling you that. Right, back. Navigation, it comes with navigation itself, but if you've got Apple CarPlay, you can use your own navigation systems like Google Maps or Waze. But it has got one built in, so you don't necessarily have to connect your phone to use Maps. Vehicle settings, right, you've got auto cancel turn signals, which is self-explanatory, they will cancel after a while. Units, so if you click on that, you've got fuel consumption, distance, temperature, etc. Auto dimmer meter illuminations, it's on auto, so as the light changes, the dimmer changes and the, the lights on here change, etc. Right down here, day or night, we're on level four, which is middle. Let's go down to night mode, see what that looks like. It's on night mode, so actually looks no different. Let's try navigation. So it just dims it down, basically, like normal night mode, sends it into black background rather than white. Let's change that back to day or back to four how it was when I got it external temperature speaks for itself 
EQ2, EQ1, EQ2. I won't assume what that's for. To me, equaliser two or EQ one two is something to do with music but don't quote me on that it might be something else it's just because I'm into music so I would assume that headlight opening don't know what that means don't want to press it just in case something pops off sound setting you got bass treble bass boost fader auto volume speaker auto volume headset and volume those two speak for themselves as you get faster and the wind noise gets louder they'll turn up General settings is beeps, language clock, system information, blah, blah, blah. Bluetooth settings, uh, you know what Bluetooth settings are. They connect to your headsets, basically. Phone settings, uh, basically connected to your phone and then play around with that. Right, so let's go down to Apple CarPlay. And this is my phone connected. Another cheeky little one there. It's my daughter's uh, single. Go and download that now from iTunes. Talia Mar, Diamonds, you know how it goes. Anyway, you can basically mirror your phone here. And you can use, let's go over here, you can use your navigation. So this is my maps, my Google Maps. I've got my iTunes there. And I've got messages here. Which obviously you're not going to see that. I'm blurring those out because you don't want to know what famous people are in my phone book. And then you go down and it goes to your settings here. So you've got, right, phone, music, maps, messages, now playing. Honda, podcasts, audiobooks, you can listen to all this through your headset. Google Maps, KissCube, Spotify, Waze, WhatsApp. So all that is available through this. But that's how Apple CarPlay works. It's not a difficult system. The problem with technology is a lot of people are scared of it. Right, so that's a quick little tour of the dashboard, handlebars and all these controls here. I hope that was informative. If not, tough. Also, the front brake and the clutch are adjustable for your hand span, so that's good as well. You've got speakers down here. Uh, that's about it for the front. All right, so what we're going to do now is ride a little bit more, see how we get on with it. We've done enough of this walking around. I don't like doing these walk rounds because it means that I'm not riding at the time, so we're going to do a little bit more riding as we take it back. Once again, another little, let's pause that a minute, another little shameless plug. There you go, Talia Mar Vetta. That's another one of her singles. So go and download that as well. <laughs> You've got to use these videos to your advantage, haven't you? Oh, do you know what I didn't do? I didn't go through the reverse bit, did I? Right, let's stop here. So if I put it in neutral, hold the front brake in, press this R button down there. That then goes into R up there. You can take your hand off the front brake and then use this little button down here to reverse. It goes very slowly at first and then it picks up a little bit so don't let that uh, make you jump i'm just warning you now it goes back and then it goes back a little bit quicker so let's do that now and there you go and that just reverses it it saves your legs basically if you haven't got strength in your legs you can reverse it off the starter motor bloody good idea and for the way back we're going to stick it in sport just makes everything a little bit sharper oh and this is your heated grips button it was hidden in plain view on the way up here I couldn't find it. It's so obvious it's there. It's even got a picture on for stupid idiots like me. Right, what I've done, seeing as we come up against a lot of traffic, there were some temporary lights back there, which has backed the traffic up a little bit, is I've stuck it in eco mode, econ mode. And it makes such a difference in traffic. Basically, this is the most economical. It sips on the fuel, you see. But what it does, it gives you a softer throttle response and almost a softer gear change, even though I don't know if it's electronic. I don't know how that works with the gear change i think that's just in my mind because it's a, a softer acceleration so there's not too much in the way of i don't know bounce between the gears with the throttle response i don't know what i'm talking about basically you should know that by now if you come here i have no idea what i talk about most of the time but there's not as much snatch on the throttle when you put it in sport in traffic it can be a little bit snatchy not badly but a little bit snatchy so once you stick it in this econ mode or eco mode, I don't know why I put an N on the end, that's uh, annoying me. Econ sounds weird, eco, yes, I get that, I don't mind that. But for the sake of this uh, video, I'm going to call it eco mode. Once you're in here, the throttle response is dumbed down, it's muted a little bit, and it's nice and smooth, just cruising around, just stop starting, it's a lot better. Do you want a big barbecue, people? I'm not very good at explaining this stuff, as you might have guessed. I know what I'm trying to say, and I think deep down inside, you know too. Let's do it in sport mode. We're going to go sport mode, country lanes, on a gold wing bagger. <laughs> she ain't. 
and slow. She's got so much torque, you can basically just stick it in third and keep it there. You can feel she's got a long wheelbase, but it handles better than it has any right to do. Especially in these sketchy conditions. Oh, a little bit of crap in the road, let's slow down for that. Ho oh, a nice little rear wheel spin then. Steps out slightly. Felt good though, felt progressive. That's probably where now I ride off road, I don't mind. If I was a road rider, I might have uh, clenched my butt cheeks a little bit then. But, oh no, it's now fun. Who thought you could have fun on a Goldwing? And this is where the manual gearbox comes into its own. When you're mucking around. Oh, another spin there, beautiful. She certainly has got some power. So I'm guessing with the trash control, it's all linked into the modes you have. Because when I went through the settings, I didn't find an individual setting for altering the trash control. So I'm guessing Sport doesn't have as much trash control as say, Tour, and definitely not as much as Rain. Yeah, mate, <laughs> I would stick to the side of the road. There's a battleship coming through. It's so smooth and lovely. I never thought I'd say, but you can have fun on a Goldwing. I never ever thought I'd say that. The two don't seem to go together in a sentence. Fun, Goldwing? No. But I'll tell you what, you bloody well can. <laughs> She's sprightly for a big old lump. A bit like myself. Right, so let's summarize and conclude this video. Let's go through a few things very quickly and I'll tell you at the end whether I buy this bike or not. But before we get to that point, the guys down at Dobles did tell me that they're doing a promotion on this. There was quite a lot of information, so I told him to write it down and I'll stick it on the screen. This is promotion that they're doing in conjunction with Honda. Some of this is Dobles only and some of this is Honda. So, quick summary, then conclusion. Quick summary, ergonomics, absolutely brilliant. Near enough perfect, it sits me perfectly in the seat. This is probably the best seat I've ever sat on in a bike. Foot pegs, very comfortable. I could do with some highway pegs at the front, maybe to stretch my legs out on a longer run, but not too bad. Uh, Bar-wise, again, pretty perfect. My shoulders sit nice, my hands sit at a nice level. Not too high and not too low. Mirrors, absolutely spot on. I can see everything I need to behind me. Screen, not perfect, it's good but it's not perfect. It could be a little bit taller for me. I would probably stick a little extension on it. Maybe you can get an aftermarket one that's taller, I don't know, but it's just a tiny bit too short for me. Not too much buffeting, but just a little bit, just a little bit too short. But overall, wind protection, absolutely brilliant. My legs have not felt a draft all day long. They haven't felt an ounce of wind. I'm tucked in here nicely, up basically to my eye level. I'm in a nice little cocoon here. Handling, very good for a bike of this wheelbase and weight. Carries its weight very, very low and you can throw around a little bit. It does take some more planning than a bike with a shorter wheelbase, uh, a more sporty bike basically. But all in all, it handles so much better than it has any right to. Suspension, I like it. The only problem I've got with this is I've ridden the one with the electronic suspension, the Tour version. And that is really, really good. This is just really good. <laughs> so only one really for this. But if you compare this to a, a bike with lesser suspension, so to speak, this is brilliant. You can feel some of the undulations, bumps, and if it is a really, really bumpy, rutty road, you will feel it through the suspension and through the back a little bit. But not too bad, and considering this bike isn't really designed for that, it probably won't be a deal breaker. Brakes, they work, they stop you. Engine wise, I really like it. I love it. In fact, I do. I love it. 
I like the tone of it. It's got a nice rumble to it. Not rumble, it's not a rumble. It's such a, a smooth sound. It's not like a burble or a rumble. It's just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. You'll have to go and listen to one in the flesh to actually get what I mean. But do you know what I do as I pull over and I'll let you listen through the mic on the camera. It's not going to be the greatest, but it might give you a little bit of an idea. Right, so this is just the mic on the, the camera. Nothing special, nothing fancy. But this is what it sounds like. <laughs> hey, so yeah, let's go on to the looks. Do you know what? I love the look of this bike. I never thought I'd ever say that in a million years that I would love the look of a Goldwing. But this bagger, yeah, I like it. It looks absolutely fantastic. Again, that's my opinion. You might disagree, but I'm telling you now, my opinion is it looks bloody great. Right, so the big question is at the end of every video, would I buy one of these? Would I have one in my garage? I think you guess what it is. Can you guess what I'm going to say? I think you can. Yes, 100% yes. I love these bikes. I love gold wings. I said it on the last one. I was shocked when I rode the last one and I'm equally shocked again at how much I like this. There's everything in my soul telling me I shouldn't like this bike. But once you ride one, you get on with it and you understand what it's about. It's bloody brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. And I'll tell you a weird thing that I didn't expect. This is a manual. And I said on the last video with the touring version, which was DCT, that you've got to be mad to buy a manual. Who in their right mind would buy a manual Goldwing? But after riding this, I like it in manual. It adds to the fun. So I'm going to go back a little bit on that original statement and say, if you want to have some fun, some real fun, buy the manual. If you want to just chill out and relax, which is probably 99% of the riders that buy this bike, buy a DCT. So what would I buy? Do you know what? This has muddled my mind. This manual has muddled my mind. It is so easy to use with the clutch and the gearbox. It's so smooth and easy that I'm not actually sure. I said before, 100% DCT. Now, I'm probably 6040 DCT to manual. So let's end the video. Once again, thank you very much to Doble's Motorcycles down in Causton. If you are down there, jump in and say hello. Go and give Ian, the general manager, a huge hug from me. Their website link will be down below. So that just leaves me to say, don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, to do all those things that you need to do. Also, hit that notification bell so you guys can get the jump on these videos. Thank you very, very much for joining me. If you've got anything to ask or say, drop it down in the comments section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So let's wrap it up. You know I love you all. Stay safe. Fish out. Get on your bags, get out my house. I don't want your stuff around. I never did you wrong, but you did me wrong. So go ahead, get go going. Get on. Get all your bags, get out my house I don't want your stuff around I never did you wrong But you did me wrong So go ahead and get going